The modality of lecturing and just talking to students, that started out in the Middle Ages when textbooks were a rare commodity. Well, we have a lot more books around now. We have the resources for the students to take that into their dorm rooms or at their home setting and actually do the interaction and ask more difficult questions and pose more applicable scenarios for them that they can then take to the next step. Flipping is really about distributing your instruction. This is really about what do your students need help with processing with having an expert in front of them. And we're able to tailor it to the students that are, that are there and participate. If they understand the basics and we don't need to spend time covering those basics again, we can move on to more complex discussions about the case. It was an opportunity to reconstruct the class and to use some of the technology I was already using and to find new technology that uh, would let me insert more student involvement into the classroom. Here at Iowa State University, our students have the opportunity to learn and collaborate with world-class faculty, leaders in their respective fields who bring a wide range of perspectives to Iowa State. With this flipped classroom initiative, we're challenging our faculty to bring that expertise into the classroom in a more effective, innovative way. By encouraging our faculty to explore new technologies and methods of teaching, they will be able to optimize the time they spend in the classroom with students. We take these concepts that we usually teach independently, that they're ultimately faced with in combination, and a flipped classroom gives us the opportunity to present those things in some context that bridges that gap. So really a chance to leverage the faculty members expertise in a more meaningful way I think. From my perspective it integrates better with the work I do outside of the classroom. So for example um, if I'm doing clinical work and uh, working to treat disease or deal with a the case then um, I'm collecting information about that and so um, summarizing that and, and putting it into the course, once I've created that template, um, that works very smoothly. And now I don't have to create examples. I'm taking that coursework, that service work that I do routinely and injecting that basically into the classroom using that as the template. My hope was to um, break the class up into smaller sections and then to intersperse more student activities. My goal in developing the proposal was to reduce the variability of delivering the content and also to allow them 24-hour access, 24-7 access to the course materials. Anytime there's a chance to reduce duplication of effort and to, to standardize something that should be standardized is, is a good opportunity to have things online. Instead of me just showing them which buttons to push and that being the training, I can show them that on the video and then and then I can watch them and, and make corrections. I feel like now there's a much closer connection between here's what I'm seeing in animals in the field and here's the mechanism to get it into class very quickly because that live portion really that's what you update from year to year now and you've got this subset of things that are tried and true and don't change and the students get those in a in a format that, that's a lot less flexible, but it's gonna be consistent and, and you know the message is theirs. What I'm doing is taking a third of my lectures, putting them online, and then using the time that I've saved for in-class meetings of student peer writing groups. You really have to think very clearly, I think, about what are the learning outcomes that flipping your course are going to help you to obtain. Technology is a great tool, but if you're just relying on the technology instead of really designing sound pedagogy, then all you're doing is like, here's my toolbox and showing it. I think you need to not only use the technology, but have a reason for why you're using it. You don't have to be technologically competent to use the technology, and that's maybe one of the great advances in the last five years. You can just sort of focus on learning and focus on ideas and so on. The only thing that you need as a prerequisite to making this work is being an expert in the content that you want to present. The research is showing that if you get students interacting with content outside of the classroom, they come into the classroom, use that face-to-face -face time with that faculty expert, they tend to get a better uh, and a deeper understanding of the content. My hope is, is that these multiple technologies let me combine the best I have in the classroom with good experiments for the students to perform on their own, 
good conversation, uh, you know, good writing projects. The benefit for the student is they get a standardized version of how to operate this equipment. They don't get Professor X's or Professor Y's version. They get the version of how it's supposed to be operated. I found it to be a really positive experience to, to work with course designers. They're the experts in how the course is, as their title would suggest, is designed. They're not there to speak to the delivery, right? So you still have a lot of freedom um, in how you're going to actually deliver the course. I think we're headed down that path because of the natural needs of the course and, and what we've seen as um, effective in terms of teaching tools and approaches. But I think the initiative really sped up that process, gave us an opportunity to justify more focus and more intense effort on that. The goal is simple, engage the students, activate a higher level of thought, improve the learning environment. To truly excel at Iowa State, we must continue to innovate, constantly reevaluate our methods, and implement effective change to give our students the best possible experience, the best possible adventure. I think the biggest thing is to listen to the students too and see how it's working for them. You know, if it's something that um, they're really asking for, and, and it may vary by course. There may be a course where they want more online material and there may be a course where they're saying, no, we want more face-to-face -face time with the professor. We saw a lot more student engagement. I think the, the reasons for that included the, con the, the context and the relevance to what they were um, what they've noticed and seen and outside of the school. I think it's easier for them to make a connection with this material is useful to me when I graduate. It's not about, you know, what I'm doing, it's really what the students are learning. I really think that a buzz is stirring, people are getting excited about this, and again, I think it's leaving them feeling like, why haven't I done this before? <laughs>